Welcome tech enthusiasts. Today, we're diving into a comprehensive guide on how to install Kali Linux in a VMware virtual machine. This powerful penetration testing platform is essential for cybersecurity professionals and enthusiasts alike, and I'll walk you through the entire installation process. Let's get started with downloading Kali Linux and setting up our virtual environment. First things first, we need to get our hands on the Kali Linux ISO file. Fire up your preferred web browser and head to your favorite search engine. In the search bar, type download Kali Linux and hit enter. Look for the first result that leads to Kali.org. That's our destination. It's crucial to download Kali Linux from the official source to ensure we're getting a secure, unmodified version. Once you land on the Kali Linux website, you'll notice several download options available to us. We need to navigate specifically to the installer images section, so look for and click on installer images in the download options. This will take Take us to a page where we can choose between different system architectures. On the installer images page, you'll see three main options, 64-bit, 32-bit, and ARM64. For most modern computers, we'll want to go with the 64-bit version, so I'm selecting that option. If you're using an older system, you might need the 32-bit version, but for this tutorial, we'll proceed with 64-bit. Look for the download icon and give it a confident click. Your browser will prompt you to choose where to save the file. Select a location you'll remember. I recommend creating a dedicated folder for your installation files to keep things organized. Now, we'll need to wait while the ISO file downloads. This is a substantial file, approximately 4 gigabytes in size, so depending on your internet connection, this might take a while. Perfect, there it is, our freshly downloaded Kali Linux image file. We're now ready to mount this in VMware Workstation and begin the installation process. However, I should mention that if you haven't installed VMware Workstation yet, don't worry, I've got you covered. In the description below, you'll find a link to my detailed tutorial on how to get the latest version of VMware Workstation up and running. Now that we have VMware Workstation open, Open. Let's create our virtual machine. Look for the Create a New Virtual Machine button and give it a click. This will launch the installation wizard that will guide us through the setup process. The first screen presents us with two configuration options. You'll see typical and custom configuration types. The typical option is simpler and faster, perfect for most users just getting started. Custom, on the other hand, lets you dive deep into hardware compatibility settings. Since this tutorial is designed for beginners just starting their journey with Kali Linux, we'll stick with the typical configuration. Keep that option selected and click Next. Now we need to mount that ISO file we downloaded earlier. Look at the options presented and select the middle one that allows you to specify an installer disk image. Click Browse. Navigate to where you saved your Kali Linux ISO file, select it, and click Open. With our ISO selected, click Next to proceed. On the next screen, we'll specify our guest operating system. Under Guest Operating System, select Linux. Then, look at the version drop-down menu and scroll until you find Debian 1264-bit. That's what we want since Kali is based on Debian. Select that option and click Next. Click Next again. Then, you'll need to set the disk space for your virtual machine. The default size is 20 gigabytes, which is the recommended size for Debian 1264-bit. You'll see two options for how to store the virtual disk. Store virtual disk as a single file or split virtual disk into multiple files. Keep split virtual disk into multiple files selected. This makes it easier to move the virtual machine to another computer, though it may slightly reduce performance with very large disks. Once you've made your selection, click Next. This is where things get interesting. Click on Customize Hardware to open up the hardware configuration window. Let's start with memory allocation. By default, it's set to 2 gigabytes, but let's bump that up to 4 gigabytes for better performance. This extra memory will help Kali run more smoothly, especially when running multiple applications. Next, select processors in the hardware list. Here, we'll configure our virtual CPU settings. Set it to two processors with two cores per processor. Having multiple cores will significantly improve the performance of CPU-intensive tasks in Kali Linux. While we're in the processor settings, Look for Enable Virtualization Support and make sure it's checked. This feature, also known as Intel VTX or AMD V, can dramatically improve your virtual machine's performance. If your CPU doesn't support virtualization, you'll see an error message when starting the VM, and you'll need to come back and disable this option. The wizard automatically adds all the crucial devices needed for a basic system to work. But let's check one more thing. Under Display, you'll see an option to Accelerate 3D Graphics. When you toggle this on, an additional option appears to allocate VRAM. While this can be useful for graphical applications like desktop environments, and visualization tools, it does require additional memory allocation. For our basic installation demonstration, we won't need this feature, so I'm leaving it disabled. Now that we've configured our hardware settings, 
Click close to return to the main wizard. Everything is set up correctly, so click finish to complete the virtual machine creation process. Excellent. Our virtual machine is now configured and ready to be launched for the operating system installation. Let's start the installation process by powering on our virtual machine. Look for the green arrow icon and click it to boot up the VM. The system will begin loading the Kali Linux installer. Once the boot menu appears, you'll need to click inside the VM window to give it focus. Use your arrow keys to navigate through the installation options. We'll select graphical install since it's the most user-friendly option for beginners. Now, we're in the installation process proper. First up, we need to select our language for the installation. Choose your preferred language from the list and click Continue. Next, you'll need to select your country. Find your location in the list, select it, and click Continue. Now it's time to set up your keyboard layout. Select the appropriate layout for your keyboard and click Continue. The system will now spend a few moments installing and configuring some initial components. Just wait patiently while this process completes. Once that's done, we need to set up our network configuration. First, enter a host name for your network. Since we're setting this up for home use, you can name it whatever you like. I'm going to type Kali Home. Click Continue when you're done. The next screen asks for a domain name. For a beginner using Kali Linux at home, you can actually leave this blank since it's not necessary for standalone or small home network setups. Just click Continue to move forward. Now we need to set up our user account. Enter your name and click Continue. Notice that on the next screen, your username will automatically match the name you just entered. Click Continue to accept this. Here's an important step. Setting up your password. This isn't optional, so make sure to enter a secure password you'll remember. Type it in, then click Continue. Next up is Time Zone Selection. Choose your time zone from the list and click Continue. The system will take another moment to install and configure some components. Just wait for it to complete. Now we've reached the Disk Partitioning section. For beginners at home, select Guided. Use Entire Disk. This option provides a simple, automatic setup without requiring any advanced knowledge of partitions. Click Continue. Click Continue again on the next screen to confirm your disk selection. On the Partitioning Scheme screen, choose All Files in One Partition. This is the simplest, most efficient option for beginners and requires no advanced knowledge of file structure. Click Continue. Click Continue one more time to move forward. We're now at the final confirmation screen. Review everything we've set up, select Yes to confirm, and click Continue. Now wait a moment for another configuration and installation process to complete. Next, you'll see a software selection screen. At this point, only the core system is installed and we need to choose additional components. The screen shows several options for desktop environments and tool collections. By default, desktop environment and collection of tools are already selected, though the screen notes these selections have no effect at the moment. Under desktop environment, you'll see XFCE, Kali's default desktop environment, GE GNOME, and KDE Plasma as options. GNOME offers a modern, sleek interface that's popular among Linux users, while KDE Plasma provides a highly customizable, feature-rich environment similar to Windows. However, Kaylee's default XFCE desktop environment is selected because it's lightweight and efficient, making it ideal for penetration testing work. Below that, under Collection of Tools, you'll find Top 10, the 10 most popular tools, and Default, recommended tools available in the live system. Leave these default selections as they are and click Continue. Now the real installation begins. This is where the system actually copies files and configures your new Kali Linux installation. You might want to grab a snack or stretch your legs because this process typically takes takes between 5 to 10 minutes, depending on your system's performance. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll speed through this part so we can move ahead with the rest of the setup. Now that the main installation is complete, we have a few final steps to take care of. First, you'll see a screen asking about the Grub bootloader. Keep Yes selected here. This is crucial as it ensures your virtual machine can boot into Kaylee Linux after installation. Click Continue to proceed. Next, you'll need to select where to install the Grub bootloader. Choose slash dev slash SDA from the options. This is your primary virtual disk and the correct choice for most setups. The other option is for more advanced configurations, so we'll stick with slash dev slash sda click continue now we'll wait a moment while the installation wraps up its final steps once everything is complete click continue one last time the system will now restart automatically to boot into your fresh kaylee linux installation for the first time when the login screen appears enter those credentials we set up earlier during the installation process and there we are we're in. Welcome to your new Kali Linux system. From this point forward, you have complete control over your ethical hacking laboratory. Take a look around at all these pre-installed tools and applications available at your fingertips. Kali Linux comes equipped with over 600 penetration testing and security analysis tools, making it a comprehensive platform for cybersecurity enthusiasts. Let's cover a few practical aspects of using your new virtual machine. If you want to work in full screen mode, just look for the full screen button in the VMware Workstation toolbar and give it a click. To exit full screen mode, 
simply hover your mouse at the top of the screen. This will reveal the VMware Workstation toolbar where you can disable full screen mode. When you're ready to end your session, shut down the operating system just as you would any other system. Use the standard shutdown procedure through the Kali Linux menu. Once the OS is completely shut down, you might want to do some housekeeping. You can rename the virtual machine to simply Kali for easier identification. This is also a good time to make any hardware adjustments if needed. You can add more memory or processor cores to make the system run even smoother than start it up again. And there you have it, tech enthusiasts. We've successfully installed Kali Linux in a virtual machine, giving you a secure, isolated environment for learning ethical hacking and cybersecurity. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech tips and tricks. Until next time, happy hacking, and remember to always hack ethically.